Welcome everybody to Friday Night Smackdown here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Alright, tonight we have Tiffany Stratton taking on Shotzi in a one-on-one -on -one match. We have one of the tag contender matches, Imperium versus the Bloodline. And we also have in our main event a fatal four-way to decide who will take on Rhea Ripley at SummerSlam. But up first, we have got in store for you an open challenge for the United States title and of course that means out first it is the mad dragon and i think mad is a very dis very appropriate description of this man the amount that he wrestles it is the czar Ilya dragonov this came out of a match last week against mark coffee and that was only uh following his match of money in the bank where he took on joe coffee and then a brawl prior to that week, well, that week on SmackDown, a few days prior to that, of course. Then a week prior to that, he had a match with Wolfgang. And then he had his only break week since, uh, prior to that, since his battle royal, just before his battle royal, uh, leading up to Backlash. This man has been on a warpath. That he's won every single match he's been a part of. He is an unstoppable force. <laughs> So who is looking to claim this dragon's head? And finally, somebody stop Ilya Dragunov on this tear that he is on. I'm curious to see who's going to be brave enough to step up. Or, oh, I was saying it earlier, who is mad enough to step in the ring with Ilya Dragunov? Because they ain't walking out the same, that's for sure. And it feels like it's a one in a billion chance they'll walk out with that United States title. But I'm sure there's at least one soul back there that wants this title bad enough <laughs> to face Ilya Dragunov here tonight. And surely this wear and tear has got to go down sometime. Oh, okay. This is interesting. This is interesting indeed. Ilya's got a tall task ahead of him. A pun intended. Though interestingly enough, he's not backed up by MVP tonight. It's Omos. Maybe that, that's curious. Maybe MVP isn't here tonight. Maybe you can't give him the tactical advantage that Omos generally also gains from MVP. Maybe MVP would have even suggested this match tonight. Maybe. I don't know. So Omos is walking out here by himself. This is going to be interesting, that's for sure, though. Because <laughs> Ilya is not a tall man. He's, uh, he's not tiny, but he's, <laughs> he's definitely not the tallest man on the roster. He's nowhere near. And now he's putting up toe-to-toe -to -toe with possibly the tallest man on the roster or the tallest ma man signed to WWE currently. There's a reason why they call him the Giants Omos and not just Omos because he is that ginormous. <laughs> uh, the Nigerian Giant at that. Anyways, I guess it's this open challenge. This is what you've got in store for you tonight, Ilya Dragunov. Good luck. So I think maybe good luck is more appropriate to Omos in this regard. Anyways, that is of course what they are fighting for. The United States title. Oh boy, do I love a good open challenge to start off SmackDown. Feels like it happens a lot. <laughs> happens at least once a month, surely. Maybe that's Ilya does that on purpose. He wants to say tough, he wants to say what? What's the opposite of Rusty? I don't know, keep, keep, keep the wheels turning as it is. Give him a good oiling, or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but either way, here we go, Dragunov with that United State title looking good on his shoulder. <laughs> Can he keep it here tonight? Will that wear and tear finally stop him just enough, or slow him down enough, I guess? But he's a challenger tonight, and challenger tonight, Omos. That is an interesting question. Robertson, the referee, showing Omos a United States title. <laughs> interesting enough. Neither men in this match from the United States. Let's get this on, shall we? This is going to be a fight. Like I said, a tall task for Ilya. But can he get the job done? Let's find out, shall we? Oh, Ilya with a big clothesline. And now a on. 
All right, I just need to break the fourth wall real quick. I'm pretty sure you can hear Michael Cole, Byron Saxton, and uh, Corey Graves. And I'm pretty sure you had Mike Rome there earlier. I may have forgotten to turn off the, the sound settings after my rise. I turned off every other setting, but not the my rise one. So I'm pretty sure it's just for these three matches, the first three matches, sorry. I'm pretty sure it sorted itself out. But if there's a, there might be a random entrance, like, somewhere that's affected differently because different times of recording certain stuff. So I recorded some uh, today and some yesterday. So there might be a little bit of a discrepancy on that, but for the most part. So if you do hear it, but I think Michael, the, the commentary team's quiet enough that I can talk over fine as long as I don't stop speaking. Uh, but my chrome, I think, might be a bit more of an issue. But uh, either way. Let's get back into the action. Oh, wait, wait, what a kick to the head. Bounce off the ropes. Oh, oh gosh, what a hell of a clothesline down. Teal, you dragon of. Jeez, okay. It almost it wasn't tall enough as it is. It doesn't need to go for the top rope. The elbow drop. Uh, Ilya gets out of the way. I don't care how tough Omos is. That arm running from that high, that's got to hurt. And Ilya just now just using his springboard just to try and get some kind of, like, uh, fire back across that. Some... I don't know what to call it, the, some evening the odds or whatever. Oh, knee drop. Omos gets out of the way, though. Oh, crabs Ilya from the back of the neck. A reverse choke slam. What? Hides. Omos with the hand on the chest now, just expecting Ilya to be over there. But no, Ilya's got more fight than that. That You've got to put a good cover on Ilya to get him away there. And Omos now. Oh, looking for a military press drop and just chucked him higher. Jeez, that's what a height. Oh, what a kick, but Ilya dodged out of the way. Ilya sends him into the corner now. Knee smash to the chin. Ilya getting all fired up, and he's going to need to be for this match. Oh, what a kick to the back. I think Ilya, like, Omos is like, knee to boot is bigger than Ilya's back, but either way, Ilya with a top beat on Moscow. Is that it? One, two, kick out by Omos. Quite an early Torpedo in Moscow, I think. I'm pretty sure that's the quickest we've added a Torpedo in Moscow in a match. <laughs> it's just a testament to Omos, I guess. But I wasn't sure if uh, you could clear that kind of height to Omos's chin, but clearly he can. I suppose it is Ilya's head. He hasn't got to get his foot up there, so that would be a much more impressive feat, I guess. Oh, and a spine buster, especially from that height. Jeez. But Ilya pushes Omos away. Oh, I'm going to stomp to the back now. I want to kick to the head. I was going to say, I felt like every move is going to hurt more, like, because Omos is hitting it rather than somebody else hitting it. Omos going for a cover now. One. Oh, kick out. Just because of how tall he is, but Ilya is one of those guys that no matter how much strength you put into it, like, like how much damage you do to him, counter the choke slam, Ilya will just get more of a, like, adrenaline from it. And it will push him to a new height. And I think that's what Omos is not looking for. That's why you need to put someone like Ilya Dragon another way. The longer the match goes, the more this benefits Ilya. It's it's weird to say in a, against a guy like Omos. But, like, just how much long... You wouldn't want to spend long in the ring with him. But Ilya is one of them. People! I said about getting that foot up high, but Omos caught it. Jeez. Oh, what a strike to the face now. They're having a bit of a trade-off of blows now. Oh, Ilya fires back. Oh, but Ilya stops that. Oh, but Omos stops that now. Overhand shot, but Ilya's feeling the effects there. He's definitely re reacting to those moves more than Omos is, I think. I def would definitely say so. Those chops. Oh, and a kick to the head now. But no, Ilya. Still stirring. Still fight left in the Mad Dragon. Omos stalking over him to now. Oh, look at the just chuck him around oh and a double axe handle. i think his elbow connected with Ilya's head there yeah geez holding onto his head quite tightly there that's not good for Ilya. oh and now a two-handed choke slam yeah again from what height one two kick out by Ilya. obos frustrated rightly so i say he wants to get this match over as quickly as he can and now looking for a choke slam. He attempted it earlier. Now he's hitting it to Ilya. Sorry. One, two, kick out by Ilya. Why am I getting their names wrong? I don't know. 
Omos now going to the outside, meeting Ilya out there. Ilya just tried to get some kind of breather, I guess. Oh, no. Ilya Kawa sends Omos into the ring now. Omos stirring. Ilya's charging. Oh, collision there. Ilya looking for a jumper. No. Omos just slams down, just chucking him around. Oh, and now a high angle spine buster. Must have felt from like, I don't know, two. Kick out. Jeez. Ilya still kicking out after that spine buster. Oh, and Omos just uses his body to just send down Ilya. If that isn't threatening, I don't know what is. Omos now getting that rage filled inside of him. He's he's stalking Ilya, but Ilya fighting out of it. The strikes now. Ilya, the end of Gyuri. How did he get up that high with his entire body? Geez, sign Ilya up for a high jump. Ilya now. Doing the same to him as he did to him earlier. So he must have did it to him earlier. Oh, Ilya looking to put Omos away. He's looking for that H bomb to the chin of Omos. Looking for the cover now. One, two, kick out by Omos. Ilya just doesn't know what he has to do to Omos. Jeez, no. Oh, you're looking for that huge clothesline to the chest of Omos. Just hoping that's put him away. One, two, kick out by Omos. Ilya, just getting tired. He doesn't know what he's got to do to put this man to rest. Ilya with the chop now. Ilya with a chop again. Oh, and a senton. Oh, and another senton just laying in the offense. Oh, first senton. Omos Carol this time on a boot, but Ilya staying standing. Ilya fighting out of it. Ilya, no, wait, can't be. No, looking for a power bomb. The strength by Ilya. Oh, Ilya, I think he's looking to finish it. He's looking for another H bomb to Omos. That's gotta be it. One, two, three. Ilya Dragunov retains. His United States title. Jeez. Tall task completed by Ilya Dragunov. But jeez. I think whoever Ilya goes in the ring against next. For, don't forget SummerSlam is not too far away now. I think Omos might have done the damage. <laughs> that the next opponent Ilya takes on. He might be able to be. Like might be beaten in that regards. Just the schedule Ilya has been on at the minute. Incredible. Anyways, Ilya Dragunov with another successful defense to open up SmackDown. What a fight that was. Anywho, I was going to say, don't forget we had that tag contender tonight. Still to come, the second one of three for that. We had the fatal four-way to challenge Rhea Ripley for the title last SummerSlam, the women's title that is. And now up next, Tiffany Stratton versus Shotzi. Uh. Now comes the center of the universe. Miss Money in the bank. And that briefcase certainly does put a testament to that. Because I feel like everybody's going to be watching her. Like Rhea Ripley. Whoever we find out her challenge is going to be tonight in that fatal four-way. Uh, it's, it's a question. It's definitely worrisome. That's for sure. But we've already seen Tiffany Stratton versus Rhea Ripley. And Rhea Ripley put away Tiffany Stratton decently dominantly. So the question is... Uh, will that play in the mind games? Who knows? <laughs> Is Tiffany going to wait for the prime opp opportunity? Who knows? And tonight she's got our match against Shotzi. <laughs> Can she ride this wave of momentum that she's started on? Who knows? But another question, like I was saying, with Bron Breaker on Raw and his two matches. What if the opponent wins tonight? What if Tiffany Stratton loses? The shots to get a shot at this briefcase. Who knows? But either way. Shots he coming out here with a taking care of business tank. Just using it to come down to the ring. It's a menacing thing, that's for sure. Look at that skill on the tank. Shots is a wild and unpredictable one. I feel like 
these two girls' personalities are possibly the most different. I was going to go for a much fancier word, but I could not think of it off the top of my head. But I feel like you could not find two more different people inside WWE between these two. So that will be interesting to see in this match tonight. Yeah, to see those differences and how they correlate to a match against each other in uh, tonight. Obviously, shots he did not get into that women's money in the bank ladder match. She lost to Charlotte Flair. Nonetheless, one of the women in that fatal four-way tonight challenging for, for an opportunity at Rhea Ripley's title at SummerSlam. So... Maybe this can be Shotzi's way back into that picture. Who knows what a win tonight would do wonders for her. But either way, let's find out who wins this match, shall we? Crowd's ready for this one. I'm ready for this one. Are you ready for this one? Let's get this on. Thank you, Robinson. Oh, Tiffany with a shotgun drop kick. Tiffany starting out on the, with the offense here. Now looking for a sidewalk slam. Sorry, my mistake. I was going to say backbreaker. I would have been wrong. And now smashing. Shots his head off the map there. Tiffany now. Oh, and a drop kick right to the face. Jeez. Tiffany now looking for another sidewalk slam to Shotzi. Just wearing down the body of Shotzi there. Tiffany showing why she has missed money in the bank. <laughs> why she's in contention in... Well, will pretty much always be, like, in the title contention until she does no longer have that briefcase, whether she has the title or not. That does put her in contention the entire time. So she's got to show it. And right now, starting out with the offense over Shotzi. Not letting Shotzi get a move in so far. Definitely... Attributing to that. And Tiffany picking up Shotzi now. Sending her into the ring. Tiffany going for the cover. Looking for a... Oh, not even a one count there. Shotzi fires up. Tiffany, I think she was a little stunned there. The missed discus clothesline, I think, putting up to that. And now Shotzi looking to see him get into the action. I was going to say back, but he hasn't really had any offense yet. The Shotzi now... Oh, what a knee strike. But no, Tiffany's getting back to her feet. Knee strike to the gut now. And now looking for a back suplex. Just turning Tiffany Strand inside out. And an elbow drop now to Tiffany. And another. Shotzi now picking up Tiffany. Looking to send her into the ropes. Oh no, pull back and another knee strike by Shotzi. Maybe she should join Zoe and Shayna's team and carry on that king of the knee strike situation there. And now Shotzi wrenching the arms. Of course, we found out who Shayna and Zoe are going to take on at SummerSlam. In Chelsea Green and Pipe and Ever. We found that out on Raw. And Shayna and Zoe wanted some Raw opponents at SummerSlam. We've got a little brand for brand there. Uh, one. Oh, Tiffany uh, kicked out. Brand versus brand there. Brand for brand maybe does kind of work. So it will be interesting. Will Raw gain that women's tag title that they have been close to be getting but not quite there yet or oh, will Smackdown hold on to it for longer who knows but anyways Tiffany Stratton back on the offense now and just whip Shotzi down smashing Shotzi's head off the mat Moonsault looking again yeah Tiffany Stratton yeah again with a Moonsault going for a cover now one kick out by Shotzi because Shotzi is tough that is for sure. Then maybe it's been more of like a bit of a psycho thing about how much she loves pain. In a different kind of way to Dragunov. Dragunov fires him up. Shotzi. Maybe a bit of something else. I don't know. But either way. Tiffany. Oh, I don't know what. Maybe changing her mind. Oh. Now she's exposing the turnbuckle. Just chucks it away. Oh, Tiffany. Oh, Shotzi moved out of the way. I don't quite know what Tiffany was playing there. And Shotzi. Looking to capitalize with a Shirani Oi. Whatever it's called. Looking for a cover now on. Two. Not even a two there. My bad. I got a little premature there. Shotzi. Looking to the top rope of that exposed turnbuckle side. Shotzi looking for the sent on. But no, Tiffany gets out of the way and a drop kick to the back now. And Tiffany, what? Why should you just grab Robinson like that for? 
Just sending Robinson out of the ring there. You've got to be careful. They can't be doing that to a referee now. Oh, grabbing shots by the hair. Oh, on her face first in the exposed turnbuckle. Four on her, just mush her up against it. And now looking for a corkscrew strand bomb. Uh, she's got the cover though, but she just did realise that she got rid of the referee. Oh, here's Robinson now. He's going for the pin. Oh, keeping the match alive, but shots he kicks out of Tiffany. Getting all frustrated now. You shouldn't have got rid of the referee, Tiffany. You should have just gone for the move. Shotzi staying alive. Dodger, she loves that pain in that weird kind of way. Oh, looking for a tour of the world back breaking now to Shotzi. And Robertson now doing the ropes. Oh, Shotzi yet again gets out of the way of the prettiest moonsault ever. Sends her into the ropes. Drop down. Oh, Tiffany counters with the clothesline now and a stomp now. Just stomping and kicking away. Just not treating Shotzi like she's anything. Other than common trash. Which probably is what Tiffany believes. If she probably believes that about anyone to be fair. No. Elbowing. Shotzi in the midsection now. Oh looking yet again. I think. But that rolling. Fireman's carry. And that sets up pretty well. For the prettiest moonsault ever. To Shotzi. That's got to be it. One. Two. Three. Tiffany Stratton with the win over Shotzi here tonight. Some shenanigans going on there tonight. A little questionable. But either way, Tiffany Stratton still comes away with the win. Giving her a nice possible momentum for whenever she may cash in on Rhea Ripley. Or maybe it could be whoever wins the Fatal 4-Way tonight. Who knows? But all I know right now... Tiffany Stratton won this match, and she's probably going to brag about it for a while. Probably be very happy about herself, and probably ne never hear the end of it. Anyways, that was match two of SmackDown. Let's carry on with some amazing show and amazing card. Of course, still in the main event, the Fatal 4-Way. Who will challenge Rhea Ripley at SummerSlam? And up next, the Bloodline versus the Imperium. Who will join that 4-Way ladder tag, joining Pretty Deadly? And supersonic duo. Who will? Will it be this team? There's no uh, gunfire in the building tonight. I believe Roman Reigns is not in the building tonight. I believe Paul Heyman isn't even in the building tonight. Maybe Roman Reigns wanted him for something. So it's going to be straight two on two here tonight. Giovanni Vinci on the left. Ludwig Kaiser on the right. My birthday brother. <laughs> it is Imperium looking to bring some sacredness back to their ring though I'm sure they're not too pleased about it being a ladder match at SummerSlam but maybe they feel when they're champions they might be able to change some more things around here is Imperium yet to gain a title Gunter not been successful going after that uh briefcase that he lost at the money in the bank pay-per-view he did get there but he did lose he did not pick up the win obviously Bron Breaker of Raw did and Gunford did get into that world title tournament but lost to Finn Balor and now can Imperium bring some honor and prestige to Imperium but first before they get into the match they might be able to give that to them they've got to take on the bloodline here tonight can they do it? I'm sure they believe they can. I'm sure Gunter's told them that they should do it or else. So, <laughs> guess all we got to do left is to find out. Uh, Going to be a good match for sure. <laughs> but anyways, without further ado, uh, let's bring out their opponents, shall we? I think we should. Or shall. The parent Americans apparently don't say shall. Don't quite know how about that, but either way, it was always a weird word when I learned it. <laughs> Anyways, not to be confused with the billboards. That is just Roman Reigns and his ego. But not to be confused, Roman Reigns not here tonight. It is just Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso. The bloodline. Said no wise man here tonight. 
Could that pay dividends for Imperium? As there's no wise man to give these two instruction on who to on how to win this match. Who knows though? Jimmy, a tag team veteran, maybe feels like he does not need it. Though Solo, not so experienced in the tag division. That is for sure. But maybe that brother coalition might help. But Imperium, they're ready for the fight. Oh, hang on a minute. Pretty deadly. The tag team champions. We know Reigns and Rollins have got some issues in the minute. <laughs> oh, well, they've had it for as long as I can remember, nearly. So pretty deadly. Doing it something for their ally and Seth Rollins a little bit. And attacking the bloodline. <laughs> That's not going to make Reigns any happier than he already is. The tag champs walking off now. Jimmy Solo looking at both a little dazed, especially Jimmy there, but Jimmy wants to start off the match. I don't know, getting ready to go there. Maybe that was not a good idea to be that way around. I think Jimmy's looking a little more dazed than Sakura is. Oh, and Ludwig Kaiser now taking advantage of Vin Jimmy Uso there. And now a stomp to the gut now. Ludwig Kaiser looking to pick the bones of what pretty deadly left of Sokoa and Uso. Oh, what a rolling fireman. Gary, we saw a few of those earlier tonight. Though I'm sure they've been training with each other. Wouldn't be surprised. And Kaiser now the drop kick. I'm sure he's very proud of his wife. Uh, sorry, girlfriend, sorry. <laughs> I don't think they're, like that, they're there yet. Anyways, Jimmy Uso gets a bit of the upper hand, but Kaiser fires back. And a mayor on unsuccessful there. Imagine that. I'm sure Kaiser would have been a happy man at Money in the Bank if both his girlfriend and his leader of his faction came out as both briefcase holders. That could have been interesting, but not so successful. He got half of there, but not all of it. Uh, Jimmy Uso now dogs under. Oh no, Kaiser fires up and what a slap to the chin. Almost like an uppercut almost. Sends Uso into the corner now. Don't have to be confused. Used with Jey Uso over on Raw. Jimmy oh, goes for the kick though. Ludwig not taking too kindly. Oh, looking for a power bomb. Uh, paying homage there. Two guns are now just stomping on the ankle, trying to get rid of that super kick. But Jimmy realized what he's trying to do. Oh, and straight to the back. He's not in the corner that Jimmy wants to be in right now. He's dealing with both of Imperium here. Oh, geez. Oh, Giovanni Vinci just taking it to Jimmy Uso now. Oh, yet again. Oh. oh, Jimmy just can't seem to get a break right now. And Kaiser now just uppercutting him in the back of the neck. Kaiser sends him into the corner. Oh, Vinci. I think we're to get Jimmy there. Kaiser not taking too kindly to that. Oh, and a drop kick. I think, I think they'll be fine. I hope they'll be fine. Maybe it's just kind of like, you hit me, I'll hit you back. Maybe, maybe they'll be fine after that. I've, I've seen Gunter chop Kaiser before and Kaiser still stay in league. With, each, with him, so maybe that's just kind of the way Imperium do things. You you wind me up, I will hit you. <laughs> if you hit me, I will hit you back. Vinci, I think he's trying to help. Guys are here. Doll, oh, trying to work together as a team here against Jimmy Uso. Jimmy putting up a fight here. Oh, just wrenched that arms out. Oh, no, on the outside, jeez, to Jimmy Uso's arm. And shoulder there. Oh, and now, guys, look at that on the outside to Jimmy Uso. Jimmy clearly had a decent bit of fire left in him, but I think after that, I think it's been kicked out of him. No, I misspoke. Jimmy Uso, the elbows. Kai's, I mean, Vinci, though, with a clothesline. Jeez. Kai's again back into the ring, trying to stop the count, maybe. Yep, he has done so. Count one now. That ring is sacred. These two want to win it. In a sacred and uh, dominant manner. Kaiser now gets back into the ring and the knee drop. Stopping Uso from reaching Sokoa there. Now tags in Vinci. Feels a little bit of hostility still there. But they've still got a tag match to win here. Vinci now with a kick to the back of Jimmy. Oh, and this is close line. But Jimmy, the elbow to the face now. Oh. Vinci firing back the elbows to the gut now. Oh, and an uppercut to Jimmy. Picking him back up. What's he looking for? Oh, no, it doesn't matter because Jimmy's coward. Oh, no, Vinci's coward. And a drop kick, but no, Jimmy's coward again. Oh, super kick to the gut and an uppercut there. Jimmy, I'll oh, go for the pin, interestingly. One, 
kick out by Vinci. Jimmy, oh, Walker trying to walk past the corner, but Vinci takes him down. Jimmy probably didn't expect it there. Oh, but Vinci been taken back down there. Jimmy, I've got to give it to him. He's showing a lot of fighting heart tonight with a double axe handle. And the elbow dropped to the back of Vinci. It now tags in Sokoa. All right. Oh, Vinci counters Sokoa. Oh, he's running. He's running to him to Kaiser. Vinci wants nothing to do with Sokoa there. Oh, and Sokoa just takes down Kaiser. Jeez, oh, and a boot. These two know what Sokoa's like. And plus, Sokoa's had a bit of chance to recover from that attack earlier. Now going for the cover on Kaiser. One, two. Kaiser gets a shoulder up there. Solo now. Picking up Kaiser. What's he looking for here? Grabs him by the head. Oh, Kaiser firing back with the elbows. Oh, looking for what a DDT to Sokoa there. His has got to be here. One, two. Kick out. And Jimmy also, maybe I think he might have broken it up even if Sokoa didn't kick out there. But I think Sokoa kicked out first. But I think Jimmy still would have broken up the free count either way. Oh, been looking for a tag there, but Sukoa not taking too kindly to it. And now a bear hug. Geyser just trying to fight out of it now. Oh, elbows. Oh, and the strikes to the heads as well. Oh, they're just double teaming Sukoa. Sukoa, oh, just about letting go there. Jeez, had a hell of a grip. Oh, now tags in. Vinci, nicely they're working together now. And a blow to the stomach now. Send Sukoa. Oh. Looking for a backbreaker to Sokoa. Oh, Vinci. Arms around his back. He's no Sokoa. Oh, he's letting Jimmy be tagged in. Maybe he sees Jimmy as less of a threat. Bounce off the ropes. Maybe a bad idea. Jimmy, the clothesline to Vinci now. Oh, and a super kick to the face. And a super kick to the back of the head. Jimmy looking for the cover now. One. Kaiser breaks it up. Oh, and guess what? It's Sokoa now. Jimmy grabs Kaiser by the head. No. Kaiser not taking too kindly to that. The elbows to the gut now. Enzigiri to Jimmy Uso. Kaiser gets out of the ring. Vinci gets back in the ring. Drop kick to Jimmy, but he stays standing. Don't think he quite got all of it. Oh, he's looking for maybe a suplex, maybe even no. Jimmy transferring the weight and a chop block to the leg of Vinci. What's Jimmy looking for here? Grabbing onto that bold head of Vinci. Swishes him to the top. Oh, but no, Vinci. I don't think he wants that tag being made between Uso and Sokoa. Vinci being sent into his own corner now. But no, Vinci fights out of it. What's Vinci looking for here? Sends him into the corner. Gets rid of Sokoa. What's he looking for here? Oh, no. Whatever it was, Jimmy has counted it. Jimmy now, the knee to the throat of Vinci. But he's in the corner of Imperium. He's got to be careful of Kaiser there. Kaiser's trying, but Jimmy keeping his distance. Oh no, Vinci with the kick to the gut now. And now are looking for a roll up on Jimmy Uso. One, two, oh, not even a two there. That's how Jimmy lost the main event last, last week. Two. Seth freaking Rollins was a well, it was a roll up that Jimmy went for and then it countered Rollins counted it. Oh, Sako just not having any of Vinci's interferences there. Oh no, but Vinci gets away from Soul. Oh, and now maybe getting a better taste of their own medicine. Oh, and a drop kick now, but Vinci wiped out there. Uso to the outside now. Oh, faint out. Oh, this time gets Sokoa. Now running away after Uso. Uh, Sokoa's gonna be an angry man, that's for sure. Oh, we're now looking for another rolling fireman's carry. Yeah. Vinci now goes back to the inside. Count of three by the referee. And Vinci doing a sacred pose yet again. Oh, takes Rick Karasakoa. Jimmy has no idea as he's acknowledging the tribal chief. Jimmy gets back into the ring. He's probably noticed Kai, uh, Soto Sakoa now has been dealt with. But no, Uso counters. Oh no, Vinci with the elbow. Sends Kaiser into the corner now. What's he looking for? Oh, an elbow to the chest. Picks him up now. Looking for a 
power bomb, but spinning style. Oh, and a cheese to Jimmy Uso. Uso feeling that. Kaizo running around. I think he's going to go deal with Sokoa. Looking for a one, a two. Kick out by Jimmy Uso. Vinci now picking up Jimmy. What's he looking for? Oh, I think maybe he's looking to end it. He's looking for another power bomb to Jimmy Uso. Holds on this time. No sight of Kaiser, no sight of Sokoa. Two, three. Imperium with the winner. You've got to give the assist to Pretty Deadly, that's for sure. But also some great tag team tactics there by Imperium. And it's given them the win. And they have advanced to that fatal four-way tag ladder match at SummerSlam. It's going to be Imperium versus Supersonic Duo versus the champions pretty deadly. Who will be the fourth team? Who knows? Guess we'll find out next week. Anyways, what a win from Imperium. Can they get that tag gold? Guess you got to wait until SummerSlam. Anyways, what a success it was tonight. Gunther's probably very happy. These two probably very happy. And both Tiffany and Ludwig going away with a win. Anyways, the main event time is now with the Fatal 4-Way to decide who will take on Rhea Ripley at SummerSlam. And out comes the man coming out first, Becky Lynch. I mean, look, I had some, uh, a bit of a disgruntle, if you could say that. With Tiffany Stratton last week, threw a microphone at her face. Because uh, I was, I was going to mention it, but I don't want to say any any words that might get Becky Lynch to fight me. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, Becky are on good terms, but maybe not for too long if I mention anything too specific. But just know, <laughs> Becky had some fun. Uh, Tiffany pushed her luck, that was for sure. And Becky made her pay for it. Is the rivalry over between the... Or a little bit of a disgruntlement maybe between those two is that over who knows is Becky the one to hold a grudge I feel like Tiffany maybe is for being a microphone on her face but either way maybe even for just interrupting her but either way Becky Lynch out here one of our four competitors in this match and out second it is Blair Davenport coming out to the ring uh, we haven't seen Blair in, I believe, since her match at Night of Champions. Uh, possibly the quickest build we've ever had to a baby level match. But it was a good one, but Blair ended up coming away with a loss. I believe that was the last time we saw Blair Davenport. I don't believe she was involved in any capacity in the build up to Money in the Bank. <laughs> so, even though she came away with a loss, it was still a pay per view match, which is more than. At least one person can say in this match. Yeah, only one person in this match. But the person that she had that pay per view match with is in this match. So <laughs> that's a lot of match, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> so that will be interesting to see the, them two collide yet again. Uh, this time in a fatal four way capacity. Uh, Blair did, though, however, try to get that women's championship around the first time on the build when we were having those two triple threats. Uh, to decide the two uh, participants for that title, but Blair unsuccessful, though she was in the triple threat with the current champion being Rhea Ripley, alongside someone that we saw wrestle tonight in Shotzi. So that, that'll be interesting to see if Blair can win this match. We can see a one-on-one, -on -one because that was a brutal triple threat match, if I remember correctly. There's a lot of heavy hitting, and you, know, you wouldn't expect anything less from that match. But it'll be interesting to see in a one-on-one -on -one faction. Now the woman I mentioned, the only woman not in this match to not have a pay-per-view match yet. It is Mi Jin, Mia Yim. Part of the OC. There's a, a, a plenty of veteran experience in that group. AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows. I'm sure can provide Mi Chin with the means and the knowledge <laughs> to come away with a lot more victories than she would have been able to do prior to that joining that joining together of those four people it can but I feel like in this case Michin is very much the underdog in this match 
but you, you can't always count out the underdog, especially in a fatal four-way match where you've got to keep your eyes in the back of your head. But it's kind of like having like two one-on-one -on -one matches that could switch around and you could switch opponents at any time. And then other times it's a triple threat match. And other times it's just specifically just purely one-on-one. -on -one. So it's going to be interesting to see if Mia Ching capitalise on that success and prove everybody wrong here tonight. We had an underdog story similar. Last Money in the Bank, Fanon Henley, unsuccessful against Rhea Ripley though. And now the woman that I mentioned having those, that match with Blair Davenport at Night of Champions. Charlotte Flair. Obviously, she was successful at Night of Champions and then ended up wrestling at Money in the Bank for that briefcase alongside Becky Lynch was also in that match. But both women unsuccessful. Of course, we've seen the, the one woman that... The final person that got into the Money in the Bank women's match on the SmackDown side was the winner, Tiffany Stratton, who we saw wrestle Shotzi earlier tonight. Yeah. This is going to be interesting, that's for sure. Some huge names in this match. So, Rhea's definitely got to keep a watchful eye now. Now that there's no briefcase, so she doesn't have to worry about so many people for one for one month. Now she's got to worry about whoever wins this match and a briefcase. Being Tiffany Stratton. <laughs> but I'm sure Tiffany is watching this wherever she is. Actually, no, that's a lie. She'll probably find out on like that. She'll probably just catch up on like a news outlet or something, probably. And complain that she's not headlining it. <laughs> That'd probably be more likely the case and she'll find out that way. But the winner of this match could very much be the woman that she cashes in on for that briefcase because they could beat Rhea Ripley at SummerSlam or she could cash in on Rhea herself next week or something. You never know. It doesn't have, they don't have to have a match prior. <laughs> Tiffany could drag Rhea Ripley out after this match and cash in right there and then. You don't know <laughs> how these things go. Either way, I'm sure Rhea Ripley's watching this somewhere. So, let's get into our main event this evening. Becky Lynch looking ready. Blair Davenport looking ready. Mia Yim looking ready. Charlotte Flair, very ready. Let's get this on, shall we? <laughs> this is the first time we've had women main event both uh, weekly shows in the same week, I think. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Charlotte tries to get a Blair, but Blair just about out of the way there. It's, it's going to be interesting to see Blair and Charlotte do uh, like a little bit of some brawling out there. But then, of course, also Charlotte and Becky have plenty of history. So that will be interesting to see. Oh, Becky Lynch now. Oh, brings her down. Charlotte, no, Beck, Blair flying back. Oh, striking Blair. Oh, there's been a Kendra stick been brought into the match. Or was that Meechin? I think that was that brought into the, into the ring. Oh, what a shot by Charlotte. And a double axe handle now. Oh, Becky Lynch was oh, looking to do some madness to the arm of Meechin, Mia Yim. Oh, Blair's just gone right into that barricade now. We definitely feel like they paired off a little bit now, like I mentioned earlier. The fatal four-way can very much become two one-on-one -on -one matches happening simultaneously. As I've seen that right now with Becky Lynch with Kendra Stick in the side of the ring. And Charlotte and Blair just chucking each other into the barricade with such force and brutality. Which is something they're going to need to be able to bring against Rhea Ripley. Oh, cover. Meechin kicked out though. Charlotte Blair now. Oh no, Blair Cowers sends Charlotte into that barricade again. I hope that's reinforced. So otherwise we're going to have a barricade falling on a bunch of people and a bunch of lawsuits coming soon. That's for sure. The amount of times they've been sent into this barricade just in this match alone. Jeez. Oh no, Charlotte's heading Blair into the ring post. Maybe you heard the word lawsuits and decided to go against it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Charlotte goes to go. No, Blair sends her into the barricade again. What force. But... Meechin fine. Becky Lynch on the inside now. I can say they definitely did something fine. It's just been some brutal moves on the outside. Me and him though picking up Becky. It's hard to keep on top of two women that are inside the ring, two women on the outside of the ring. Oh, Northern Lights. By me, me and him. Oh, looking for a springboard now. Crossbody. Charlotte, the forearms down Blair. Meechin going for the cover. It's bringing Blair back in. But Lynch kicked out at one. Don't oh, meet in ducks. Oh, kind of dodges a little bit. And now looking for a goal. Oh, does Charlotte Flair protect 
Yo neck, people. One. God, oh, Blair does. Like broken up there, but also took out Robinson at the same time there. Paul Robinson, he got chucked out of the ring by Tiffany earlier tonight. Now Blair's attacking him. <laughs> Robinson not getting a break here tonight. <laughs> the women seem to have something against them. Oh, Blair. Oh, Cobb Stomp. Just pulled out a Cobb Stomp. Becky Lynch's husband's own move. Let's go. You're coming out. One, two. Becky kicks out at two. I think Charlotte might help to get in the shoulder up, but she's me and brings down Charlotte for that satellite DDT. Blair. Oh, the combo now. Oh, oh, what a beautiful combo. On oh, Becky Lynch. Now gonna hit her of a move of her own to Blair and Pop. Now Charlotte's getting up. Becky, not letting her get up easy. Oh, right into Robinson again. What's Robinson done, man? Oh, Becky looking for a backspoiler, but no, Charlotte knows how to counter that. These two women know each other very well inside the ring. Oh, now Blair's been sent back into the ring. Miriam's back in the ring, all four women back in the ring. Becky's out, though. Charlotte's still in that corner. Oh, what an explosive suplex by Blair. Becky brings another Gendo stick. There's now two in the ring. Oh, what a boo by Charlotte to Becky. Kendo stick in hand now. Oh, Kendo sticks to the face, but Becky stays standing. Oh, what a something on by Blair. Jeez. Oh, what a, oh no, Charlotte counters. Gets out of the way there. Forearm. Oh, and a boot. The whole reverse back over. Paying a march to her husband there, did Charlotte. Good old Andrade. Oh, and a spear by Charlotte. Going for the cover now. One, two. Kick out by me, Yim. Becky not taking him too kindly to that pinfall attempt, but Charlotte says she doesn't care. The dragon screw right there. Blair sends her into the corner. Oh, Becky, the knee strike to Blair, but she doesn't stay standing there. Oh, looking for a schoolboy into a power bomb. Drop kick to the back. Charlotte, oh, the chop to the chest. Oh, kick down. Bit of a double team going there, Mia Yim there. On the underdog, like I said. Oh, Mia Yim looking for a sit out power bomb to Becky. Charlotte going to look, try and take advantage of that situation of Mia Yim being distracted there. Oh, Mia fight out of it. Don't know, Charlotte blocks it. Oh, Blair though. Oh, elbow. Oh, all the women just throwing strikes into a little bit of a mosh pit there. Who will end about on top? I don't know. Oh, Becky's down. Oh, but she's getting back up though. Mia's back down. Oh, and a German suplex by Blair. Oh, and Charlotte looking for the roll up on Blair. Davenport, can that be it? One, two, kick out by Blair. Oh, good to see these two go back into action again. What a hell of a match it was in Night Champions. Like I said, for a match that had no build, it was an amazing match. One, oh, kick out. By Charlotte. Night Champions was a hell of a night in general. All our pay-per-views have been great. <laughs> oh, strike to the gun now. Oh, and a forearm. Becky now looking for a snake eyes to Blair Davenport. Charlotte chucking Bla Becky into the corner and she just collapses down now. Oh, Charlotte looking to, to take advantage of every woman being down, but uh, Blair's kind of stirring a little bit. Becky's back up. And Charlotte looking in for that handstand. She can see Becky right there. She's looking in the figure four. And Becky just brought down the double axe handle there. And the chop. Charlotte taking too kindly to her. Breaking it up. But Becky throws a strike back. Oh, and a slap now. Oh, Becky not taking too kindly to that slap. But Blair brought in a sledgehammer. Oh, and a knee smash there. Jeez. Okay. Oh, and a sledgehammer out to the midsection of me. Um, Becky's interesting. Drops it. Oh, going for the pin. No, Blair says no to that. Oh, Blair now doing it to the arm of Becky Lynch this time. Look for a storm. Jeez. Oh, Charlotte. Looking for a center. I think she just about got a little bit of the head there. On, well, her head onto Becky Lynch. Which you do see sometimes that with a swan on. You do sometimes see people hit their head on it instead. I don't quite know the tactic. But, oh, Charlotte's got a sledgehammer in hand. Uh, Becky Lynch just gets whacked in it while she's in the dust. Locking in the dust. Oh, but, jeez. Charlotte Flair, no remorse. Oh, we just froze it in the midsection there, Becky. Ian looking for something under the ring. She's got a chair in hand. Charlotte's noticed. Doe chops her out of her hand, but Mia Yim. Maybe kind of played like a weird style of possum there. Send Charlotte into the corner. Now, now she's looking to do something to Becky. Oh, and a knee smash. 
Blair though. Oh, Mia gets out of the way. Oh, and a neck breaker. Charlotte, no. Yeah, counters. Chops now looking for a natural selection to Mia Yim. Oh, but Charlotte's noticed. Blair down, put Buta down. Blair's gone to the outside. Be Charlotte hasn't realised. Breaks up the pin. Becky starring. Blair looking for... Oh, what an arm breaker. Oh, no. Just wrenching on the arm of Charlotte there. Make it hard to do that handstand for the figure eight. Oh, Becky Lynch looking for a man handles land to Mia Yim. Charlotte realizes, oh, Mia Yim both realizes, yeah, again, for Charles Robinson getting attacked. <laughs> oh, Blair. oh, no, Blair. The smash to the face. Oh, I want to counter to the face now. Blair looking for an exploder suplex to Becky Lynch. Looking for a cover now. One oh breaks up the pin. Someone on the leg now. Oh Mia. Buying. Oh to Blair there. Wrenching the arm down now. Oh, oh. Becky Lynch they stand in. Oh, now looking for a man handle slam to Charlotte Flair there. Oh yeah again, Mia Yim notices. Goes to attention back to Blair Dunport. Oh, what an elbow to the back of the head there. Oh, look in front of her. Come on, go, yay. Oh, drop kick, but Blair stays standing. Blair now just back suplexing Becky Lynch there. But Becky still stirring, not being able to take advantage of Mia Yim. But Becky looking to do some more damage to Mia, I think. Maybe, oh, and a forearm down. Oh, is that that's a baseball bat to the face? Oh, but Becky tries to, to attack Blair, but Blair there. Ducks and now just swinging the bat to Charlotte Flair now. Oh, and one more to Becky Lynch there. Jeez, someone get that weapon out. Blair's hands. I mean, I know it's all legal, but jeez, you got to think of morality and the humanity. Oh, on a back suplex by Charlotte. Oh, locking. Oh, a leg over the chest of Becky there. Oh, Mia's gone into the barricade now. And Charlotte. Oh. Locking in a bit of a dragon sleep over her knee there. Wrenching Blair. Wrenching Blair proper. Oh, Blair's tapping out. And it's the outside, so it's all right. Oh, a baseball back to the back of their head. But Charlotte stays standing the strength. Jeez. I mean, well, it's more the toughness, I guess. But, oh, Becky Lynch goes right into the ring post there. And Charlotte now stomping on the leg of Becky there. Goes into the ring, does Charlotte... Oh, maybe a bit of a fake out. Shoulder barges Mia Yim. Mia dodges the kick. Oh, looking for that tilt world DDT on the outside. But that takes it out of Mia Yim, though. Blair just disrespecting Becky. And Becky now taking too kindly to it. Oh, those two have been tearing each other apart tonight. It's been interesting. But so's Blair and Charlotte. It's just the brutality that Blair brings to a match. Charlotte's been chucked back in the ring by Mia Yim. Oh, Mia Yim. Looking. Oh, to Becky Lynch now. Blair, though, stirring. Shot now just taunting in the middle of the ring there. Just letting these women just tear each other apart. The back. Suplex is being half was on the concrete, half was on the bow, half was on the chair. I know that equals one and a half, but that's how much she hit it all. Oh, Jeez, the chest just gets chucked now. Becky now looking to do some damage to Blair Davenport there. Doran brings it down there on the outside. Charlotte playing her march to her father, Ric Flair. Oh, can I stick and brought another one? We don't need more, surely. Becky, though, chucks me him in the side of the ring. Oh, now Blair Davenport looking to do some damage to Becky. We know Becky sends her into the stairs and a chop block. Charlotte Flair looking for the figure. I don't think Becky realized what she did by chucking me and me and him in the ring. I think she's just going to get rid of her. I don't think she's noticed. She's got a chair and swings it at Blair. But the submission's been locked in. Blair's realised. Oh, and Mia Yim's tapped out to the figure eight. Sometimes that is the case when you split off into two one-on-one two -on -one matches. You forget about the other two. And the match ends just like that. Charlotte Blair is the person that's taking on Rhea Ripley at Summer Slam. There you go. There's the Women's Championship match. Whew, that's going to be a good one. Charlotte Flair with the win. Oh, 
Speak of the devil. I'm sure she'd appreciate that name there. Out comes the women's champion, Rhea Bloody Ripley. With that title over the shoulder. Charlotte. <laughs> she wants that title. <laughs> Rhea wants to keep hold of that title. These two have had great matches before. I'm sure they can have a great match at Summer Slam. Rhea holding that title high. Oh, hold up a minute. I mentioned her earlier tonight. And of course, she also wrestled tonight. It is Miss Money in the Bank making her second entrance of the evening. Tiffany Stratton. Is it very much? Tiffany Stratton could be cashing in on either one of these women. That is for sure. Whether she even decides to cash in on that briefcase at SummerSlam or not. It could be at any time. She might not cash in until next WrestleMania. Who knows? But back with Tiffany Stratton. Holding that briefcase. Holding it high. Showing it off to the universe. How much this makes her the center of it. And clearly she's got something to say. Don't you girls forget about me too. As your Miss Money in the Bank. That makes me the center of the universe. And it means it's going to be Tiffy time as soon as as I want, and that championship will be on my shoulder soon enough. You're right, Tiffany. I did forget about you. I forgot about you the second I tapped you out at Backlash in Puerto Rico. Whenever you decide to cash in on that briefcase on me, and it will be me you cash in on, as I'm not losing this anytime soon, I will tap you out again and go back to forgetting about you at the back of the line where you will remain for the rest of your miserable career. Whoa, 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 Rhea. Slow down. I wouldn't be so sure about that tile staying on your shoulder longer than SummerSlam. So it'll be me that runs through Tiffany whenever she decides it's Tiffy time. I don't care which of you I cash in on, as I will become champion and make every women's championship match since Backlash relevant. Shut up, you dope. I've still got a score to settle with. Sorry to cut you off there, Bex, but I've got an interview tomorrow and a flight to catch. Which I know you would know anything about as you're not relevant enough. So I've got to go now. Toodles. Thanks for watching SmackDown and good night.